Uh, everybody, thanks a lot. Uh, welcome to uh, the first our first meetup uh, in VR. Um, if you're having trouble uh, hearing me, feel free to come come a little closer. Um, sort of based on distance here. Um, so yeah, thanks a lot for coming. Uh, this is totally experimental. Um, it's the idea sort of came uh, when we wanted to hold more business meetups and business conferences eventually. Um, but it's kind of hard to scale. It's uh, as the meetup organizers here, uh, Angelo and uh, and Micah know. Uh, it, uh, it takes some planning, it takes some a few weeks of preparation, um, and then people having to drive through rush hour and all those other considerations of like real life uh, uh, elements. Um, so, but 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 the idea of uh, wanting to do more meetups so we can you know kind of connect with more people and for us we're ourselves a, a content development studio so being able to meet with potential clients, potential customers, um, and partners is very important for us. Um, so, so that's sort of where the idea of, of holding this uh, meetup and eventually maybe even a conference in VR came from, um, just because people don't have to travel, don't have costs and, and things like that. Um, so I'll start uh, my talk uh, just by sort of explaining who we are. I think most most of us here know who I am, but um, uh, let's see, sorry. Uh, there, I, I am going to invite this person, okay. Um, so I'm, I'm Jeremy, uh, I'm the CEO of Virtual World Arcade and director of the VR Arcade Conference uh, and our meetups here in South Bay, San Jose, California. Um, and thanks everybody for coming from all over, over the country uh, over here. Um, so uh, as a content development studio, we primarily today, as of today, focus on enterprise contracts. And um, I think within the audience we have uh, uh, meetup organizers, we have content development studios, we have developers, we have LBE uh, platform providers, operators, uh, artists, and so, so I'll sort of gauge uh, my, my talk towards, towards that. Um, we started off, as some of you guys might know, uh, in the LBE space, in the, in the VR LBE content development space. We focused only on developing uh, content uh, for player arena scale uh, uh, team building social content uh, for LBE. So LBE is location-based entertainment, uh, VR arcades and VR theme parks, uh, sort of what we heard earlier. Um, and we quickly found out, uh, for us at least, for our experience, I'm curious to hear the, the other folks in the room, uh, it's, a, it's a difficult market. Um, VR already is a small market. Uh, and uh, for us, uh, it, it didn't seem like there was a lot of money as a, as a developer for solely, specifically, only uh, LBE. So we sort of did some research as to why that might be. And over the years, we've gotten more data from analysts in, 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 uh, in the field studying uh, the VR arcade market um, and data that we've gathered from our own VR arcade conference. Um, I think as of 2018, about 13,000 VR arcades, LBE uh, centers opened or uh, exist. Um, and then the, there is about a 10% uh, closure rate uh, every year annually. Um, and the most of the VR arcades that close, close within a single year of them opening. Um, and from what we've been studying, a lot of it is due to uh, so um, this, our, our belief is, is that uh, most of the people who go in trying to open and operate, like the entrepreneurs who try to operate a VR arcade, don't, may not precisely have uh, uh, retail entertainment location uh, business experience. Um, and I believe a lot of that causes is what causes a lot of the, uh, the closures. Um, however, the success cases like 2-Bit Circus in LA, I think uh, Evan and... Uh, uh, and Sean are, are uh, familiar with those that, that, that location. Very successful, but uh, it, it's run by uh, Brent Bushnell, who's the son of Nolan Bushnell, who's the founder of Atari and Chuck E. Cheese. So they they know how to run a, an LBE. Um, it's one third restaurant, one third bar, one sixth like traditional arcade, you know, with with a screen like a two D screen kind of, kind of game, um, and then one sixth, maybe a little bit more than one sixth, uh, VR games. And the, all the VR games that they run are like four player, uh, team building, arena scale, like things like that. Um, so, so, and, and those guys are, are doing well. Like on a Tuesday night, you'll see them completely packed full. They do a bunch of events, uh, and 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 those guys are doing well because they they have the expertise on how to run a retail location, uh, entertainment location. Um, but because of that, as a developer, for us taking a step back, um, we realized a lot of the people in the states, at least, didn't have that expertise. So it would be difficult to only focus on 
uh, uh, sort of that revenue stream, uh, uh, licensing from LBE locations. So then after that, we looked into Steam, as many of you guys have uh, shipped games or helped ship games on Steam, um, to find out what that market is like. And that's a little better. Uh, if you, the research we did, if you get, if you get like a top 10 game, uh, uh, you're, you're going to make in the first year, like over 10 K, uh, per month. Um, so if you take say, uh, like 15 K, right. What we found is if you take the same game on steam, that's 50, that gives you 15 K revenue a month. And then you go and license it to VR arcades, LBE centers, uh, you get 10% of that. Uh, revenue from LBE versus uh, in in uh, in Steam. So if I'm making 15k a month on Steam from from Steam sales, I'm making $1,500 uh, from total VR arcade licensing. Now that's not to say it's not uh, uh, complete. It's not worth it because there's marketing, there's feedback, there's people using it, especially for multiplayer games. There's value in having multiplayer uh, uh, users, uh, concurrent users, on your platform all the time. Uh, but that's what sort of what the uh, uh, hey hey how's it going? Uh, that's sort of what the numbers, the revenue numbers look like. So we looked at that. And then after that, we transitioned into, but that still wasn't like a sustainable model for us. We're a team of five. We work with uh, several developers remotely and we expand and contract as needed. Um, and we started looking towards uh, enterprise, enterprise contracts, um, enterprise businesses that aren't necessarily VR businesses, but they uh, have some niche use case, some niche problem to solve, and they can use VR as a tool to solve them. And that's sort of where we came in. We went and serviced those enterprise contracts um, and, and, and created uh, a VR CPR certification training program, fire safety training, uh, 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 active shooter uh, training for this company that normally uh, does corporate employee training uh, for big companies like Shell and Apple and ExxonMobil. And they'll fly firefighters and experts out uh, to do these, but that's uh, very expensive. Uh, that's not really scalable. It's limited by the number of uh, experienced personnel you have on your team. With VR, they could just send out the headsets and, and have them shipped back. Um, so, so that worked really well for their niche model. Um, we've done a, uh, a a time travel educational experience uh, for uh, Pacific Science Center in Seattle. Uh, we've done a cybersecurity uh, game that's meant to educate people about cybersecurity threats, but also uh, ab essentially advertise the products. Uh, we built in the products as like weapons in this wave shooter game. Um, and, and, and teaches the people about the, the, the cybersecurity company's product. So, um, and then uh, currently we're uh, working on a, a therapy, uh, uh, like a therapy session, VR therapy session, um, these researchers and scientists um, to help tr use uh, VR therapy to treat uh, uh, depression, anxiety, PTSD uh, in, in, the, in the long run. Um, and uh, another contract where, for a local fitness center uh, that wants to develop a VR fitness curriculum. So we found that there are uh, these niche companies with these niche use cases and problems that can be solved with uh, VR as a tool. Um, and that uh, so, sort of over our past four year, our four year journey is sort of what we've arrived at as sort of the sustainable model to continue being uh, VR developers and continue uh, uh, being a VR studio. Um, and then we sort of with the uh, revenue that we get from these contracts, we're able to go and continue pursuing our, our passion projects and the games that we want to make and, and the other you know types of fun research things that we want to do with VR. Um, that's sort of how we arrived, arrived here. Um, Talking, uh, I'm going to switch gears a little bit towards the end of the, my talk. Um, I don't know how much time I got left, but um, uh, to to the virtual conference. So, uh, as a studio, we found out that we get the most contracts uh, and enterprise uh, uh, clients and things like that from from these types these conferences. Um, but there was no way for us. So we hold the we host the annual VRK conference. Some of you guys met us there, um, and and so that. Uh, but, but there's no way, say, like I could hold four VR arcade conferences in a single year. That'd be really hard. Um, but uh, so then we thought, okay, well, what's, w what is the solution that could allow us to, say, hold four conferences a year and meet uh, a bunch of these business, uh, 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 potential business partners and uh, 
develop these business relationships, but also providing value to every other business attendee like we have been with our own conferences, um, connecting uh, hardware people with, uh, with uh, content developers, with distributors, with, uh, with investors, with media and, and things like that, uh, and with locations. So um, that's sort of how, how this idea uh, came to fruition. And what we're hoping to do over the next few months is uh, uh, you know, this is our first meetup in VR. We hope to do a second one uh, soon, and and taking the learnings we take from this, um, and do a better, uh, sort of more organized, and sort of uh, figure out what all the problem and pain points are. Um, we're going to be sending out a survey, uh, and we'd love to get your feedback uh, after the meetup on you know things that we we think uh, could be improved for the future. Um, and eventually, our plan is in 2020 to release our own platform um, that's designed for business meetups, business conferences, um, with things like virtual business cards. You know, today we each sort of uh, put our name and then plus our company name ish sort of in, in our in our usernames in VR chat. But wouldn't it be nice if you could actually have you know the badges that you have uh, when you go to conferences and expos? Um, wouldn't it be great if uh, there could be a, since it's all digital? Uh, have a digital system that matches you matchmaking, uh, matches you to to uh, business people who have the business opportunities you're seeking and are able to uh, uh, provide you or uh, to accept uh, or to take what you're offering and be customers and partners with each other. Um, so that's sort of what, what we're thinking about over the next few months and really appreciate you guys uh, again coming to the first meetup. Um, what's my time right now? What time is it? Seven fifty. Fifty. Okay. Um, I do. Uh, I'll, I'll maybe I'll spend like five minutes ish on on Q and A, um, because I'm sort of past my time now. Um, <laughs> any any questions? Yeah. Yeah. Sean. Um, so this platform that you're developing for the game dev meetups type situation. Yeah. Um. What other applications do you think it could have other than just game dev meeting? Like, yeah. is there any other niches it might fill? Absolutely. So uh, for starters, we're thinking the, the first few sort of application scenarios would be uh, VR developer meetups, right? Like, because VR developers have VR headsets and they're familiar with these games and using Steam and things like that. Um, and then a VR conference, because you know everybody there who goes to the VR conference has a VR headset and knows how to work with this technology that could be very confusing to use. Um, however, when we can use those sort of intermediate meetups and conferences to prove the value, the business value, um, the number of business leads you're able to get, the uh, amount of uh, projects or, or clients or deals you're able to make out of these conferences. Once we sort of prove the value, we want to expand this out to uh, essentially every other enterprise business sector. If you imagine every major enterprise vertical has uh, some giant conference, some giant expo, whether it's oil and gas industry, uh, whether it's fashion, whether it's cars, auto, whether it's uh, manufacturing, um, whether it's education and 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 science, whether it's uh, you know a climate change, whether it's politics conference, it, 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 there's there's this this uh, model of of a conference to connect people together has been proven over again to to provide business value and help people get things done get work done and when people are able to get work done that, that's that's money that's that's business value so if uh, we believe that um, when the value is there right when I don't have to spend a thousand dollars to fly over to the other side of the world when I don't have to spend you know another five hundred dollars on staying at hotels when I don't have to be away from work and not be able to do work and not have my computer and, and, and all the people that I work with at my office. When, I, when we're able to prove that business value, I think, um, even just today, right? Like we have Evan from LA, we have Max from uh, New Jersey, uh, and, and, and Sean from Texas coming over. This would have been, this would have taken more time to plan if we wanted the same people, but all to come into San Jose, I think. So um, as we prove that, I, I believe that there is a lot of potential in every other enterprise uh, business. And the, the thing is, the exciting thing is, uh, enterprise, 
if we think about technology and the and, and the rise of new technologies like smartphones, like uh, uh, like the internet, it all starts. It starts with like military and government use cases, and then it goes to enterprise, and that's really where all the money is. And that's when, when pulling all the money from the enterprise to feed. Uh, you know, uh, a, a development of demos, right? With all the content developers out there, I could imagine, okay, a bunch of these, you know, Coca-Cola wants a Coca-Cola VR advertising experience. Um, they're going to hire VR developers. That's going to bring money into the VR industry. They're going to, um, the, you know, uh, Alex Kitman, inventor of and head of HoloLens at Microsoft, spoke at our conference, at VRK conference this, uh, this April. Um, if he's coming to speak, I don't think he's going to be using, you know, some VR chat avatar. He's going to want a special art avatar, and they're going to have, they're going to employ artists uh, who specialize in uh, avatars for business use? So I, it's gonna. I believe that this will create, uh, bring in uh, 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 people from the enterprise and, and money from the enterprise, and, and put it into uh, the VR industry, developers and artists. Um, that's sort of that's sort of what what makes me excited about about this. Yeah. Thanks for the question. That was a long answer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think I think Fanny's telling me to wrap up. Um, so our, our next speaker is Evan from Castle Steps Games.